But unfortunately, we have some sad news to start out with, and that is the death of uh, WWE Hall of Famer, one of the biggest, really, legends in the entire industry all time, Bruno Sammartino, who passed away on Wednesday morning, 82 years old. And look, you know, 82 is a is a, a good age to live to. I mean, that's a full life right there, although um, I got to tell you, when I heard the news, I was stunned. I was really stunned because... You know, even though he was an older man, Bruno seemed to, I'm sure he had his health issues, as everybody does as you get older, but Bruno was still working out, he was still keeping himself in incredible shape, you know, the mind was there, he was still making appearances, and so, considering the shape that he was still in, I was I was very surprised to hear that he had passed away. Uh, his mind, like I said, still sharp as a tack, I, I, he's one of the few people I could listen to tell stories all day long. And I heard a lot of those same stories that Bruno would tell in all the different interviews that he did uh, about his upbringing as a child and his family, you know, running from the Nazis and how he was sick with rheumatic fever. I heard that story so many times, but it never got old because first of all, it's an incredible story when you really go back and hear about what he went through as a kid, what his mother went through. I believe, I believe she was shot. Um, and his family coming over to this country and, and you know trying to live out the American dream. It's an incredible story worthy of a, a feature film. And I know that there's been talk about doing a movie about Bruno's life. I think he was approached. He might have even had a hand in it. There might be something that's sort of in the works right now. But these things just take forever. And so now, unfortunately, if something does come out, he won't be around to see it. Uh, but his his life story from start to finish is absolutely worthy of uh, of a feature film, not just a documentary, but an actual feature film. And um, his impact on the business, his impact on WWE, going back to the early days, the the WWWF days, and what he meant to that company. Uh, you know, you look at people like Hulk Hogan, and you look at people like Stone Cold Steve Austin, and I guess in this era, you would look at somebody like John Cena. And what they meant to business and what they meant to the company. And Bruno really was, I think, the first to uh, sort of, you know, be in that role, be be in that uh, sort of position in this company where everything was sort of built around him. And if anything happened to him, if they didn't have Bruno, uh, they would have been in trouble. I mean, they really would have been in rough shape. Now, Bruno held the world title for eight straight years when he won that championship. Eight years. He was the champion for, and he only lost it because he was burned out. <laughs> he wanted to lose it. He was ready to drop it. They didn't want him to, but he was burned out. He didn't want it anymore. And then he had a second title reign. Again, I think he had to be convinced to come back, and he held the championship for a second time, and that lasted another four years after they, they got him to come back. So all told, that is 12 years as world champion. It's pretty impressive stuff. Pretty impressive stuff. You know, you, you hear about somebody like Fabulous Moolah, who is the women's champion for something like 26 or 27 years. And yeah, that's impressive. But when you when you hear the stories about the kind of stranglehold that Moolah had on, on you know, women's wrestling and, you know, basically making herself champion. Uh, it's kind of like when you hear about all the titles Jerry Lawler won in Memphis. And Jerry Lawler was a huge star in Memphis. But at the same time, he was he was booking his own territory and sort of, you know, effectively booking himself as the champion. I mean, look, if I ran my own territory, I could be champion 50,000 times also. Uh, but that really wasn't the case of Bruno. You know, he worked in uh, in New York, I guess, right, as they uh, referred to it back then. And he was just such a big draw with, with the Italian community and just that whole fan base in New York and Philadelphia and sort of on the East Coast there that um, they kept him on top for, for a very long time, and he had a lot of sellouts at Madison Square Garden. I'm not sure how accurate some of those numbers are, but still very impressive. And had the falling out with Vince McMahon. Did not, you know, he did not like what he was seeing as far as uh, all of the big muscled up guys like Hogan coming in in the 80s and the steroids and all that kind of stuff. And he was an announcer for a while, and they kind of convinced him to come back and do a few more matches. Uh, I can remember him having some matches with Randy Savage in the uh, mid '80s, uh, some matches in Madison Square Garden, and then he, you know, retired finally and just was on very, very bitter terms with the company, very bad terms with them. And then finally, uh, a number of years ago, thanks in large part to the efforts of one Triple H, uh, who has tried to repair a lot of burn bridges between Vince McMahon and some other big names from the past, he. 
uh, was able to bring Bruno back into the fold. And Bruno made amends with Vince McMahon. He agreed to come in and be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I think that was back in 2013. And again, in that speech, told all of those stories about coming up as a kid and being sick and coming to this country and getting into the wrestling business. And it was really cool that he was able to uh, you know, make, make amends with Vince and come in and they did the whole big bronze statue for him and for him to, to be honored in a way that, uh, he should have been honored. There were a lot of younger fans, I'm sure, who had no idea who he was, you know, and now they do because he did come back. Uh, now I got to see Bruno live, I guess, well, I guess besides at his Hall of Fame induction, I'm pretty sure I was there, but I got to see him live at the Manhattan Center back in 2006, uh, at the Ring of Honor Glory by Honor Five Night Two show which is a mouthful, but that show is still one of the best wrestling shows that I've ever attended of any kind, Ring of Honor, WWE, or otherwise. Uh, Bruno came out. He was the special guest that night. He came out, and again, anybody, if you know the Manhattan Center, it's literally in the shadow of Madison Square. I mean, Madison Square Garden is like right across the street, and it was cool uh, to see Bruno so close to the garden, right, where he was this big name for so long, and he, he came out, and he gave a speech in the ring, and I remember the entire Ring of Honor roster, or at least, or most of it, just surrounding the ring, absorbing every word uh, that Bruno was saying, just hanging on every word the man said. Um, and it was just a really cool. It was a cool speech, and it was a really cool moment. And I was really happy to uh, to be there. I still have some photos I took on my disposable camera because I didn't have uh, we didn't have cameras on our phones back then. So I had to bring my disposable, or maybe you did, but I didn't have one. So I, I had my uh, crappy disposable camera, which uh, indoors did not take very good photos. They were, they were pretty dark, but um, I, I, I always thought it was also kind of cool that I shared a birthday with, with Bruno, um, October 6th. You know, we both uh, shared the same birthday. Of course, I shared the same birthday with Dixie Carter as well. I don't know how to feel about that, but... Uh, I always thought that was kind of cool. And now there will be uh, no more birthdays for Bruno, which makes me very sad. Uh, but they are airing a documentary honoring him, and uh, it's probably like an hour long or so, um, about the career, the life and times of Bruno San Martino. It's after Raw this Monday night. Uh, it'll be airing on the WWE Network for anybody who wants to check that out. Unfortunately, Bruno was not the only person that we lost this week. Uh, number one, Paul Jones, also passed away this week. Uh, real name Al Frederick, 75 years old, no cause of death yet. He was a star in the mid-Atlantic region in the 70s into the 80s. He managed a stable late in his career called Paul Jones's Army. Uh, and he managed a bunch of names. He managed Rick Rude uh, at one point, Manny Fernandez, the Powers of Pain, the Assassins. Uh, Abdullah the Butcher, superstar Billy Graham, and a, a bunch of other names. Uh, I didn't see much of him myself. I was aware of the name. Um, I, I knew he was a wrestler. I knew he was a star. Either It was either in the NWA or, or uh, Mid-Atlantic. Uh, turns out it, it was Mid-Atlantic. But uh, nonetheless, yet another uh, wrestling passing this week. And we also lost two actors this week. Uh, Harry Anderson. I was a big fan of his work on Night Court, which is still one of my favorite sitcoms. Uh, he was only 65, died of uh, cardiac arrest. I know people may talk about, you know, Harry the Hat on Cheers. He had a recurring role on Cheers, which is this other iconic sitcom. And uh, they talk about his role on the It miniseries back in the early 90s. To me, though, he will always be Judge Harold T. Stone. Uh, the only reason I even know who Mel Torme is, is because of Harry Anderson. And if you don't know who Mel Torme is, you need to look him up. Uh, Vern Troyer also died. Many me. Uh, I hate to say that. I mean, the guy shouldn't, you know, he shouldn't be known for the rest of eternity as many me, but he kind of will. Um, no official cause of death. He was, I believe, 49. So again, a young guy. Um, but he has ties to WWE in that he was a big fan and he guest hosted an episode of Raw back in 2009. So he did have a role. With the WWE, uh, he died this week. Barbara Bush died this week, 92 years old. She lived the most out of all of them. And Avicii died this week. He lived the least out of all of them, only 28 years old. If you put if you put the radio on at all in the last five years, or if you walked into a club somewhere, I guarantee you heard this guy's music. Uh, so yeah, he passed away this week. So I'm glad that week is over. Let's put that week in the rearview mirror and move forward. 